Well, we had a little bit of excitement around here yesterday. Let's ever take a look at some of these pictures. See that sheet metal hanger from the power lines there. You drive down the street, you think, hmm, something's going on here. And it's not very good. These pictures from the Sublette County Sheriff's Department. You see a roof torn off of that building there. And also that travel trailer flipped over. You see that's that roof that actually blew off the house and got moved over there. And a few more pictures here. This is the trailer that was uh, flipped over. You can see a lot of damage to that. Inside of your house looks like that. You wouldn't be very happy, obviously. And one more thing we want to look at here. This is the uh, some video that was taken from that image yesterday. Now we took the sound out of this. The person here is trying to do their best Andrew Dice Clay impersonation, but I might be doing the same thing if I saw this out my front door. You can see the trailer getting flipped over. I especially like the trampoline there. It's getting thrown all the way through the air. I'll shout for a minute just to let you watch this. Pretty impressive video here. It turns out we did have a tornado there. You can see some details right there. Uh, a very small tornado in EF0. It's only on the ground for about a tenth of a mile, maximum width only about 20 yards. Maximum sustained winds, estimated winds, I should say, right around 80 miles per hour. Now, you might be asking, you know, why don't we have a warning on this? We'll take a look at a couple of images here. First, this is the uh, reflectivity from uh, the storm yesterday. You can see there's some lightning strikes there. A little bit of uh, reflectivity there, but again, you're looking at this, you're thinking, that's eh, just a thunderstorm. Now, what we really look at to look for rotation in the clouds, this is what we call uh, storm relative motion. Basically, how fast the winds aloft are going toward or away from the radar. Now, this was taken from an event around 10 sleeve of June of last year. You see that area right there? That's what meteorologists call a couple. It's an area of winds that are moving uh, toward the radar and away from the radar, very close to each other and very fast. You see that's a good indication of a tornado. Now take a look at this image. This is from yesterday. Same thing, this is SRM, and you can't really see anything there, which really makes it hard for us to warn on that. And there, why is that? It's what meteorologists call beam blockage. Now you can see the radar, we're in the Wind River Basin where that radar picture is, and over in the uh, Green River Basin is where the tornado was. Now you have the Wind River Mountains there, and obviously uh, it sends out radar beams, and they can't go through rock, and we have 13,000 foot mountains there. And the other thing is, even if it can get over that, with the curvature of the earth, the radar beam actually goes out straight at a very slight angle above the ground, and there's a curvature of the earth. So when you get that, yeah, it goes up higher in the sky. And the lowest elevation scan we have on this is about 13,000 feet. And when you get a tornado forms like this, this is what we call a landspout tornado. It's not that classic supercell you see out in the plains a lot of the times. It forms the very lowest part of the clouds, and we just can't see that from the radar. So I'm putting out a call to action here. If you want to help us find these things, we need you. If you can, become a National Weather Service storm spotter. We do have a lot of uh, training dates coming up. Go to that website down there if you want to go out and become a storm spotter and become trained and help us identify these features. Have a good day, everybody.